So Xiaomi just came out with a brand new power bank but this one is a little special because this power bank has a 30,000 milliamp power battery. Hey guys welcome back to the channel and this is an in-depth review of the Mi Power Bank Boost Pro 30,000 milliamp hours. Alright so I've got the power bank out of its box and the first thing that hits you is the size and the weight of this thing. This is a fairly big and a massive power bank. Obviously it's got a 30,000 milliamp hour battery so it will be big and heavy. Now I do love the build quality of this power bank, love the textured finish and it does feel nice and solid. Although it does weigh quite a bit at 653 grams, the 20,000 milliamp hour power bank weighs around 333 and finally the 10,000 milliamp hour power bank weighs 227 grams. So this power bank is something that you don't want to put in your pants pocket because yeah it's gonna look awkward and uncomfortable. But it does fit though. So I would say the more appropriate location for this power bank is in your backpack. And comparing this with the 20,000 milliamp hour power bank, you can see it's a lot more thicker. And finally, comparing it with the 10,000 milliamp hour power bank, you can really see the difference in size. Now let's take a look at the USB ports. So we've got a total of four USB ports, two USB type A ports for output, micro usb port for charging the power bank only and a usb type c port for charging up the power bank as well as your other devices by the way the usb type c port also supports usb power delivery 3 so if you have a usb power delivery charger like this one the power bank will charge up at 24 watts we'll do some charging tests later in the video so i will let you know how long it takes to charge the power bank up now coming to fast charging all of the USB ports on the power bank do support fast charging. However, you can only fast charge one device at a time. So right now only this phone is charging through the power bank and as you can see it says fast charging. Now watch what happens as I plug in a second device or a second phone. That fast charging goes away and the phone will charge at standard rate. So both of these are charging at standard speeds. Now the total output current of the power bank is limited to 18 watts that's around 3.6 amps at 5 volts. So that means if you decide to charge up two devices the total output current should be about 1.8 amps. Now if you decide to charge up three devices at the same time then the total output current on each of these USB ports will be limited to 1.2 amps because the maximum output current of the power bank is limited to 18 watts or 3.6 amps at 5 volts. It even says so at the bottom of the power bank. So if you want to read what's written on here you can just pause the video I'm recording in 4k so it should be visible. And also one very important thing to note is that this 30,000 milliamp hour rating is calculated at 3.7 volts which is the nominal output voltage of the lithium cell inside the power bank. So the actual capacity will always be lower than 30,000 milliamp hours. This is completely normal and it is valid for pretty much every power bank in the market. Now inside the packaging you get a micro USB cable and the user manual. Now I will show you the user manual but at the end of the video so do stick around. Now let's take a look at the LED indicators at the top of the power bank. To check the level of charge press the button on the side and the LEDs will blink. Right now all of these LEDs are blinking that means the power bank is fully charged. And finally coming to the button itself it performs three functions. Number one it shows you the level of charge in the power bank which I've just shown you. Number two if you press the button twice it will put the power bank into low power charging for small devices. So this mode is kind of meant to charge up devices that don't pull a lot of current like your smartwatch, toothbrush, this is the Mi Electric Toothbrush T100, awesome little gadget and it will also charge up your Bluetooth speaker without having any issues. So I think what's going on in this mode is that it prevents the power bank from going into sleep mode for about two hours. This is because these small devices don't really pull that much current and the power bank thinks there's nothing connected. So that is why they have given us this separate mode for charging up these devices. And finally, number three, if you have an LED light from Xiaomi like this one, uh, you can plug in the LED light and you can use this button to turn the LED light on and off. So press this button and it will switch off. Press it again and the LED will turn back on. So yeah. Alright, so let's move on to charging tests. 
first off, let's do a charging speed test and see how fast we can charge our phone, which is the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. Now this phone has a 4500 mAh battery and we are starting from 10%. And as you can see, the phone is indeed fast charging. And I'm using a USB Type-C to Type-C cable to charge this phone. And also, I'm gonna use the stop clock and see how long it takes to charge this thing up from 10% all the way up to 100%. So yeah, let's go. Alright, so in about one hour, we were able to charge the phone up to 82%. So minus 10%, that's almost 72% charge in about 60 minutes. Not bad, it is charging at a quite decent rate. And finally, full charge completes in one hour and 25 minutes. As you can see, the phone is now fully charged. And the power bank is still showing that it is 100% charged. As you can see, all of these LEDs are blinking. So yeah, that's a fairly decent rate of charging considering we are charging up a pretty big 4500 mAh battery. Alright guys, for the part 2 of the testing process, let's crank things up a notch and charge up 3 devices simultaneously. So that means we will be using all 3 USB outputs of the power bank. So first off, I've got my camera over here. This is the Sony Alpha 6300. Uh, this camera has a 1000 mAh battery. And as you can see, the battery is completely discharged. The battery icon has a cross on it. Uh, secondly, I've got the Galaxy S10 Plus over here. This one has a 4100 mAh battery. And finally, the Note 10 Plus. This phone has a 4300 mAh battery. So here we go. All three devices are charging. S10 Plus charging. The Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is charging and so is our camera. I'm going to keep the power bank here. So I'm going to switch this thing off and a yellow light should light up over here showing the battery is charging. There you go. So yes, all three devices are charging. Now do keep in mind when you are charging three devices at the same time, the output voltage is limited to 5 volts. So no fast charging and the total output current is limited to 3.6 amps. So that means each of these USB ports should be supplying around 1.2 amps to the devices. So this is a sort of a scenario when you are traveling, you are charging up your camera, two smartphones with your power bank. The camera gets fully charged in about two hours, which is followed by the Galaxy Note 10 Plus at about two hour 35 mark. And finally the Galaxy S10 Plus fully charges at about two hours and 42 minutes and the power bank is still flashing three LEDs. So that means the charge level should be somewhere between 50% to 75%, but I think it's closer to 50%. Alrighty, so now let's charge up a tablet because hey, there's still plenty of charge available in the power bank. So this is the Samsung Galaxy Tab S5e, 7,000 milliamp hour battery, and I'm gonna use the USB Type-C to Type-C cable to charge this thing up so that it fast charges. So there you go, it is now charging and the battery level is at about 10%. So we will be charging this thing up from 10% all the way to 100. Now it says here 2 hours and 25 minutes. That is normal because keep in mind we are charging up a massive 7000 mAh battery. So even with fast charging, it's going to take a little bit of time. In about 1 hour, the tablet was charged up to 51% and finally, full charge completes in 2 hours and 28 minutes. So we have charged up a total of 5 devices, Note 20 Ultra, Note 10 Plus, S10 Plus, our camera and finally this tablet. And there is still one LED flashing on the power bank. That means the charge level inside the power bank is somewhere between 25 to 0%. According to my calculations, I think the charge level is somewhere around 20%. So you know what that means, right? we're gonna have to charge up another smartphone. So our Note 20 Ultra is back here. I've drained the battery down to 10%. There is one LED flashing on the power bank. I'm gonna plug this thing in and see how far we can get. So there you go, it is fast charging. Again, I'm using a USB Type-C to Type-C cable. Let's go. Okay, you know what? I thought the power bank would shut off right in the middle of charging this phone up. But to my surprise, the power bank is able to charge up the Note 20 Ultra from 10% all the way to 100%. And there is still one LED that is flashing on the power bank. Alright, so because the power bank still has one LED flashing, let's charge up another smartphone. 
So I've got the S10 Plus over here. Let me plug this thing in. Now, according to my calculations, I don't think we will be able to put much charge into this thing, maybe five or six percent. But yeah, let us see how far we can go. So we are at 10%. It is fast charging. All right, so that's it. As you can see, the power bank has switched itself off and the phone has stopped charging. So we were able to charge our phone up to 34%, so minus 10% because we already had 10% charge. So that's about 24% charge. And finally, our power bank is empty. All right, so finally, let's recap. First off, we were able to charge up the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. This phone has a 4,500 milliamp hour battery. Next up, we charged up the Galaxy S10 Plus, 4,100 milliamp hour battery along with the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. This one has a 4,300 milliamp hour battery along with the Sony A6300 1000 milliamp hour battery. Then came our tablet. This is the Galaxy Tab S5e 7000 milliamp hour battery. Now, even after charging up all of these devices, there was still a little bit of charge left in the power bank. So we again recharged the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra from 10% all the way to 100. And even after recharging this, there was still a teeny tiny bit charge left in the power bank. So after that, we charged up the Galaxy S10 Plus, which was able to charge up about 24% before we ran out of charge on the power bank. Also, one more thing to keep in mind is that all of these devices were discharged to 10% except the camera. So the camera was completely empty, but the phones and the tablet had about 10% charge in them while we were doing the charging test. So not exactly fully empty, but almost empty. But yeah, nonetheless, that shows you how massive the battery is in this power bank. So now let's charge the power bank up and see how long it takes to get to 100%. I will be using the charger that came with the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. The model is Samsung EPTA800. This is a USB-C power delivery charger and can supply 9 volts at 2.77 amps. And our power bank can accept 9 volts at 2.6 amps over USB Type-C port using power delivery. The charger should have no issues supplying 24 watts, which is the rated current to charge this power bank up. So how long does it take to charge the power bank up from 0 to 100%? Well, it takes around 7 hours and 22 minutes using a USB Type-C 24 watt power delivery charger. Now, not everybody has a USB Type-C power delivery charger. So what if you have something more like this? This is a regular fast charging charger. This is from Samsung, supports adaptive fast charging, and the maximum voltage this thing can supply is 9 volts, and the current is limited to 1.67 amps, or 5 volts at 2 amps. So this is a regular fast charger. And also, I'm using a micro USB cable. This is the micro USB cable that came with the power bank. So as you can see, it is charging. It's completely empty. Here we go. So how long does it take? Well, it takes around 14 hours and 14 minutes to fully charge this 30,000 milliamp hour power bank using a 15 watt fast charger. So this is exactly why I recommend that you invest in a good quality 24 watt USB type C power delivery charger. Otherwise, you will be spending a lot of time charging the power bank up. All right, guys, I think I've pretty much covered all of the aspects and the features of the Mi Power Bank Boost Pro 30,000 milliamp hours. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that because this power bank has such a big battery, it will not be allowed on domestic and international flights. It says right over here under FAQs. So this is something that you want to keep in mind. You won't be able to carry this with you on a flight. But I think for camping, road trips and long train journeys, this thing is perfect. And finally, as promised, here is the user manual. Just pause the video if you want to take a look at what's written on here. And here is the other side. All right, so I guess that pretty much brings us to the end of the video. And if you have any questions about this power bank, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll try and answer them. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more videos and I'll see you guys next time.